kids are in the creek. The water is cold, but they're in there anyway. And Charlie is so miserable because he can't be near Zaya. I think he's gonna get on his back. <laughs> he hates, he doesn't really like being in the water. Are you gonna get in the creek with the bros? Or do you want your swim clothes on? Yes. No, you're just gonna get in and play clothes. Okay, that's fine with mama. Do you need help? How'd it go? Did you get all, did you get all wet? Oh yeah, you are wet. Huh? I said, did you get wet? Yes, definitely. Most of my body's wet now. I guess you know, can I go with you? He's not going down again. He's just gonna well, play. I might, I might go down, but it, do you want me to go with me if I go down? Is it is it pretty safe? Like it's not too crazy. Well, the only hard parts are right there and right at the end, but they're not too crazy. Okay. But the, the only the only dangerous part is well, there probably wouldn't be dangerous for him anyway, um, because there's a branch hanging low there, and I almost hit my head on it. Well, but he's ducked. sitting on your lap. He will yeah. hit his head. But I mean, like if we if we go, could you get in right here and get in? Wait, you take him? That's the most fun part. But I mean, okay. the, I think the reason that I hit, almost hit the branch was because the bros pushed me out. Okay. If I just like go by myself, like if we go out there and I just kind of ride along down there. Or lay backward. Um, yeah, the last five times I did it, I never even came close to the branch. I am. Okay. All right, well, if Judah goes, Ezra, you can ride on his lap, but you have to listen to him, okay? Are you freezing? Yeah. It's pretty cold. You guys have all your clothes on, so it's like even colder because your clothes are holding water. Yeah, I'm. I'm You're gonna go get down. I, I, my, my jaw like moving so fast up and down. <laughs> You're shivering. <laughs> really. fun? Huh? What'd you think, Ezra? Was it fun? Yes. So fun? Yeah. Was it worth getting in that cold creek? Well, he has his own tube and it has a tie, so it ties to somebody else's tube, but his tube is not blown up. Daddy has to blow it up. So. So this time, the boys were able to get the little like tie attachment thing that goes on the tubes so that they can go down in their own tubes and I think that's a little bit safer than before.
There he is. Happy. Nice. It looks good. That's a beast. This is like a Long Fargo Saturdays wood chipper. Burning broad, so. <laughs> Did you hear me? What? Said it's like a Fargo wood chipper. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me nervous. No. <laughs> okay, so this is our ugly shed. Um, and back here, if you can see back behind these trees, I have a bunch of buckets and old planting containers and a bunch of um, pavers that we didn't use. All of the wood that we've cut and chopped up is. Sorry, I have kiddos yelling at me. They went around the pond. Not this anyway, way. we have all this wood. And so what I want to do is get all of the buckets and the like planting stuff in this building. But we've got to clean the junk out of it. And Dean is going to chip up all of this stuff. And we're going to put the chips in the bottom of the shed just to kind of create, like I guess, a nice base. Then eventually I want to have like shelves, some sort of like metal shelving. You know, not anything that's attached to the wall, but something that just kind of stands, I don't know, from the floor up against the walls and I can store things in there. Um, garden tools, flower bed stuff, I don't know. Anyway, this wood is gonna be stacked along the side, I think. I think that's a good plan? Works for me. Okay, and then we'll just have the pavers over there and this will look a little bit neater and I'll mow closer to the building and everything. All right, so you're gonna show me what it does? Now, do you, um, is it just gonna go like in a pile on the ground or over there or what? And will you be able to gather that up with all that tall grass or do you want me to mow it real quick? Um, I'll just run a couple pieces through so you can see. Oh, going. okay. I'll, I'll put a piece of tarp out. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, so tree, <laughs> that is that I that was crazy. So it's the Woodmax MX8800, and why did you pick this one? Because it chips such large. It's U.S. made, veteran-owned company. They were super great to work with because they were sold out. Um, and he worked with me on the date and stuff when they were going to be shipped, and they couldn't get there. It was really good. So it chips like little branches and it chips how big of a diameter of the eight inches like up to eight inches Which yeah. is a lot yeah, for a wood chipper, right? Like and it's good. safe, right? There's a safety mechanisms on oh, it to yeah, make it yeah, safer yeah, than yeah, most yeah. wood chippers. I mean, you'd, have, you'd have to intentionally get Get worked in there. If it's there. Okay So we don't have to worry about any Fargo issues. No Fargo. Okay, yeah. good deal. <laughs> and that's the uh, It's the adjustable, chips. but this is how it comes from the factory. So that's nice. Oh, so, yeah, yeah so that'll be perfect for the inside of our shed. And I think like eventually our plan, so we have all of this, we have all these dead trees. Like these trees are just full grown. What are these beech trees your dad said he thought? Or is that what he ones? said? Yeah, all these dead ones right through here. Um, no. What did he say there, birch? Trees. No, um, birch pills. We've got birch around, but they last a lot longer. These trees only had about a 20 year lifespan because they're all dead. 
Every yeah, room. and this house has been here for more than 20, like almost 20. Yeah, something. I think she probably would have planted them. Back. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit over 20 years. So a lot of the trees are full grown. They're dead. The tops are breaking and falling out of them. Um, so we're cutting a lot of the old ones down, digging the stumps out, and we will replace them with fresh new trees as they die. But we have so much wood, so we'll eventually maybe use the chips for pathways or whatever I don't know they have to compost for a while before we can all around all the ponds I mean just it's crazy how much is overgrown here yeah and, and and then just regular maintenance I mean with all these trees we want to try to keep them trimmed and clean and stuff and this is this is going to save so much hassle yeah no more burn permits no more staying home all day so you can keep a track of your fire it's yeah be so I feel like you've been working on cutting these dead trees down for, oh my, since last fall? Yeah, because yeah, we burned a couple of them. So, I mean, and we still have, like you can see, there's still big chunks. And like this one way over there, I don't know if you guys can see it, that just fell out of the top of one of those trees. Um, and then, you know, we have piles of stuff. Dean and the boys split that wood the other day. That stuff will get stacked somewhere. We have a pile in the garden. <laughs> that was going to be burnt but you may chip it or maybe just burn that part i don't know we have to get all of that stuff cleaned up and then we'll replow and get the garden ready to plant but anyway there's a creepy kid creeping up on us wild isaiah <laughs> are they playing hide and seek i don't know i don't know i should probably know but i don't anyway so there's like a tree that uprooted and fell over there it's just we have so much to kind of clean up and we really just started around the house and we're kind of working our way out now because we want this property to be really nice and pretty. We want to enjoy it. We want, you know, friends to enjoy it. What's he doing? Where's Jago? <laughs> anyway, so we've got a lot of work to do. But your wood chipper is very nice and it'll help a lot. I'm so happy to see lot. a burning bush reduced to a pile of chips. Oh my gosh, yes. Is that what that <laughs> thing is? Burning bushes, that's what that was. Uh, mm. The number of burning bushes on this property. I don't know if I've ever said that before. Where, where were all the burning bushes before, Mister? The your mom and dad's. Yeah. So they the bought house. the property and it had a nursery on it that was full of burning bushes. And Forrest, my older brother, was 15 at the time, yeah. and so he went to all of the neighbors and he said, "For five dollars a piece, I'll move these into your yard." And so this lady took advantage of that offer. <laughs> And Forrest worked his butt off all summer long to make, you know, $150. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> he did. They're everywhere. And, uh, and, and he did it right, too, because they are thriving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're thriving a little too much because they shoot up those little, what are they, like runners? Like, they, they come guess, up out yeah. of the ground. There's so they're just bushes growing next to burning bushes. Everywhere. So anyway, we're getting rid of a bunch of them, but we're keeping the ones, like, some of these, like, right through here, we'll keep... I'm not sure what those two are. That's a burning bush, and there's one like between those two trees up there. There's some others around that are, they have plenty of space and they're really pretty, but there are some that are like way too big to be close to our house and um, they're growing. There were five of them in the front. That's yeah, we ripped a ton of them out along the front of the house because they were just way too big. Anyway, thanks for showing me how your wood chipper works. I'm excited to see this cleaned up and. <sighs> that get will definitely get some use this year hey friends it's Sunday evening and I was just coming on here to wrap up this week's vlog and I realized I have not showed you all all of the gardening stuff that Dean and I have worked on this week um, a lot of times I'll take you along with me and show you as I like work on gardening stuff but since I've done that so much I thought I wouldn't do that this week but I do want to flip the camera around and show you some changes that I've made to some garden beds um, I actually finished up creating a complete garden bed and I'll take you over there and show you guys that it doesn't look like much at the moment but you have to visualize with me and you'll be able to see in your mind hopefully what it's gonna look like we'll see as the season progresses but anyway before I wrap up this week's vlog let me flip the camera around and take you around and show you what we've been working on this week so the first thing I want to show you is in this garden bed. Um, I have done two or three different things over here to change this up just a little bit. So the first thing I want to show you guys is this little geranium. It's looking kind of sad right now, but 
it is perking up. Um, this was transplanted from another garden bed that I will be redoing over the course of the year. As things pop up in the bed, I'll dig them up and move them. So you can see that part of it's looking kind of sad and wilty and then other parts of it are looking really nice and fresh and the flowers are still popping out on it. So I think it's gonna be okay. Anyway, it's a pretty pink purple. So I thought I would move it over here to this garden which has mostly pinks and purples. My echinacea is starting to pop out. Um, and for the most part on this side, I've always had these three lavender plants, but I moved these two that were all the way over there. There's one left. There were three on that side of the pathway and because they're kind of shaded over there, they're not growing as big or doing as well as the ones on this side, which get more sunlight. So I moved these two from over there, over here, um, to give them more room. I also planted um, an echinacea plant, another one right through here. So it's kind of spaced out the same distance as those two. So it's right here, but it's actually just a root instead of a plant. I bought these two as big plants last year and this time I put a root there. So we'll see how that goes and how long it takes to get going. Um, my hydrangeas are starting to bloom. You can't really see it right now, but they're starting to get some green on them. These plants right here are a type of alum that will be blooming soon. My phlox is doing really well. I actually dug a spot here because I was going to divide that big phlox plant and move it, but I ended up not doing that because I looked it up online and this isn't the ideal time to do such a thing. This is an ostrich fern and it's coming back up. And I actually moved this. This is a bunch of weeds. I need to tear this out and put some seeds in there and I'll probably do that sometime this coming week. Um, these are mouse ear hostas and I can't remember what that one's called, but they are starting to pop up. Over here, my tulips are all up. My prashinkia, I think that's how you pronounce that, is starting to die back. And that is a butterfly bush and I think it's dead. So it didn't get enough sunlight or the frost, the coldness from winter killed it. I don't know, but I'm gonna have to replace that with something. And then this little lavender bush will have to be taken out and found a new home. This <laughs> needs to be cleaned up. Um, but one other thing I wanted to show you here in this front bed is this railroad tie, Dean replaced it. It was um, really rotted. All of these railroad ties actually have been here for over 20 years. Um, and this one was in bad shape, so he replaced that this week. This is the front garden bed that I did in a recent video. I'll link to that uh, here. And you can kind of see these um, hydrangeas are starting to bloom. Right down at the bottom, there's some green blooms. All of my hostas are popping up. Um, I filled some more dirt in here that I dug a hosta plant that I missed out and I filled some more dirt. So I gotta put some more mulch there and get more gravel for this area because the rain has kind of washed it out a little bit. It just needs a little bit more. Um, and anyway, Dean replaced a couple of these railroad ties and he finally got around to fixing the end which got broken up when we pulled out a big burning bush over here. So he fixed the end. So now we can fill this with dirt, smooth this out add more mulch all over this section, move that rock, and then we're gonna put some sort of like tree here. This is an Easter egg half that my kids have left here since Easter because you know, they just leave things laying everywhere. But hello, that's my life. Oh, let me show you guys this as I walk around to the other garden, which you're not gonna be able to see it now. I should have recorded it when Dean did this. So the other day, we're walking back here in the yard and we noticed that the yard was like, this one spot was like dipped down really low. And we were trying to figure out what is with this. And so Dean took the shovel and he dug around, like around the spot. And it was like this underground, empty, almost like a cave. And there was water probably like four feet down, like just like maybe a foot of water, four feet under the ground. It's like this big open area. Yeah, just like a sinkhole randomly in our yard. Very strange. So Dean dug it out, he filled it with rock, and then he put some dirt in there and that filled it up pretty well. So he's gonna smooth this out a little bit and hopefully grass will grow back over that. And we're gonna keep an eye on that because that was really weird. This is like back behind our house. This is my bedroom. And these are like really tall grass reeds that we cut down this year. Um, and so that's why all of the grass is dead here because they get really tall, they hang over and the grass doesn't grow where there's no light. So that's what that is. Um, my dogwood trees are all blooming and this is where we have our bird feeder and a little birdhouse. And so I cut out this circle, cut out all the grass 
and I planted some plants around here. Then I filled it with mulch. All of the plants are either roots or bulbs and so they're going to take a while to grow. Um, it says that most of them bloom in summer, but I don't think I'm going to get any blooms this year just because they are so tiny. Uh, but I don't know, maybe I will, fingers crossed. Anyway, I took all of the grass out of here and I moved it over here. This, I don't know if I got, if I told you guys this or not, but I had a pile of leaves there that I was going to use in some raised bed gardens, like a no dig type garden. And I left them there all winter long. And my dad said, that's going to kill your grass. And I was like, oh, it'll be okay. And guess what? It killed my grass. So I took this grass and I moved it over there and I'm hoping, like I'm watering it. It's looking really rough. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm watering it some and I'm hoping that that will root down and spread grass really well through there. Otherwise, I'm going to have to plant grass seed and hope that I get grass. So here, this bed is divided up into quarters. So there are four different sections. Right in the back, there is a clematis or clematis. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And it's going to crawl up this bird feeder. And then in this section, I have pink um, echinacea. And then right here, I have this bluish purple plant. And I think it's called, uh, what is it called? Blue sea holly or something like that. It's a really cool looking plant. I've seen it in a lot of like flower arrangements, um, but it's really thistly looking, but that's what's there. Then on this side, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's some sort of like spicaeus. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's some sort of like a plant that grows really grassy foliage and it has these really tall purple to pinkish looking spikes, uh, like candlestick spikes. Um, anyway, that looked really pretty on the cover of the bag when I bought it. And then on this side, I have this blue shaded columbine plant. So it'll be really green foliage and then blue to white kind of flowers when it blooms. And so we've got some purpley blues over here, some pinks right here, and then I've got the purple columbine that will grow up this pole. And then all around the edge, I have white sweet alyssum, I think is how you pronounce that, all around there. So it's a really low growing kind of ground cover. It's green and then it blooms these white flowers. So that's the plan. I will probably add other flowers, maybe take some things out as it grows. I just kind of have to watch it and see and adjust the color scheme or add things in as it grows. Okay, another thing that I got done this week was I added seeds to these two pots here. I've got, I think, larkspur in the middle, so that will grow up really tall. Then there is some sort of like blue and white flower that grows um, about halfway up the larkspur on the uh, front part right here. And let me think what that is. It's kind of like a morning glory, but it's not a morning glory. And then there's some sweet alyssum right along the lip of the um, pot that will kind of spill over a little bit. So those two things I normally keep right here on this side of the garage door and right here. But this area is a big mess right now because we have mulch here and Dean's been working on getting stuff out of the garage and redoing that room. Um, so I'm keeping these here, keeping them watered and moist and hopefully that stuff will bloom pretty quickly and we'll keep them on both sides of that door. Um, and then when Dean gets this um, uh, French door, they're gonna be French doors right there. I'll probably move them a little bit closer to the door instead of centered right here on the wall. And our strawberry thing that Dean built me last year, our little tiered strawberry stand is blooming and doing nicely. So this was something I got done. I'll take you to one other garden and show you some other things that I planted over there. Okay, this is the garden at our shop and this was the very first one that I made when we moved in here about a year ago. Um, and over here, I have this big empty area. And so I fill it with mostly annuals. So right here in the front, I have some little princess cosmos. They're about two feet tall, so they're really little. And then right back here, I have this, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like a green hops looking plant. And it gets about three feet tall, maybe. And then my rose bush, this is the yellow poet's wife, David Austin Rose, that is getting ready to bloom soon. Um, back here, I have some foxgloves. These are like a creamy white. They're really pretty. And then back there, underground, which you can't see right now, is a delphinium. It's like a aurora blue, so it's a lot of purples and deep blue colors. And I also added in some more delphinium roots all around through here. It's like a mixture of purples, 
think they're pinks and yellows. I'm not exactly sure if they're pink in there or not, but um, this garden is mostly yellow and purple. I had blue in it last year, but I pulled some of that out because I didn't really love it. Um, and so I'm adding some pinks in here and I'm trying to like, now that I'm adding more gardens to our property, I'm trying to make the colors kind of match throughout the different gardens. And so I'm adding a little bit of pink in here. Um, yeah, so we'll see what that looks like when they pop up this year. Hopefully they'll come up this year. I don't know because they're such tiny roots. It may take them two years to come up. I don't know. But um, we'll see what they look like. And if there's one that's a particular color that I don't think looks good in this garden, I'll pull it out and move it somewhere else and leave the ones that I do like. So anyway, most everything that I planted last year is coming up and looking really good. Uh, this right here and then over there, that's some more like around that post, which I have to have a bird feeder put in there. I had um, morning glory over there last year and when I tore it down at the end of the year it tore the bird post or the bird feeder house thing off the top of that post because those morning glory vines were insane so anyway I put the alum thing over there I don't know if you guys can see those hostas are starting to look a little better these are the ones that turn out all wilty you can kind of see some of the wilty leaves right there but then as more leaves develop they start doing a little bit better that one always looks good when it comes up um, Creeping Jenny is starting to spread and fill this area out a bit more. My yarrow is really starting to bloom. It's back there behind all these daffodil leaves. This is like a carpet stuff that I planted last year, so it's really starting to come back. It's actually creeping into my mulch. I might have to dig that out of there a little bit, but um, it's actually even flowering up here, it looks like. Yeah, there's one tiny little blue flower. Okay, so that was quick and spastic and a lot of stuff to cover. But anyway, I just want you guys to see um, what we're doing here at the cottage as we continue to make this place a little bit more of what we want it to be. Like I have this big vision for what I want this place to be and it's gonna take a long time and a lot of hard work to get it there, but it's gonna get there. So anyway, I'm glad that you are coming along with us. If you have dreams of making your land look really pretty and doing all these gardening things or decorating your house and you like old world antique types of decor, then I'm your girl because I'm going along and doing it right with you. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this week's vlog. I will talk to you guys next week. Bye.